Friction. It's all about sticking around. Now we've been talking about a lot of different forces, so let's start adding names to the different kinds of forces uh, involved in free body diagrams. I hope by the end of this lecture you can identify different types of friction and calculate what's called the coefficient of friction given a sample free body diagram. All right, friction, also known as F, with this little F underneath it to indicate that this is a force of friction. And it's a force that opposes the direction of movement. It almost always has a negative in front of it, and it deals when two surfaces that rub. And you can do this by rubbing your hands together. That force that one hand feels against the other as it rubs is called the force of friction. Now, there's two ways that we can think about this type of force, but why don't we review some names? Some very common names of forces, and you'll see that they include these subscripts, which are small words a little bit lower than the capital F. One very common one is force of gravity, or F sub G, subscript G. It pulls. It's everywhere, and is often referred to as weight. It's the force that pulls down. Force normal, on the other hand, is a capital F with a lowercase capital N, is the force perpendicular to a surface. So it's the thing that holds things up when you put something on the table or on the ground. A support force is really a generic name for the thing that's holding up the object. Now we've done this with spring scales and I demonstrated with my Newton's apple, but hey, you can replace it with a name or identify the thing that is quote-unquote holding up. Force applied, or F with a capital A in the subscript, is someone or something pushing or pulling. Force friction, which is the basis of this lecture, is the force that opposes motion. We're going to talk about it in a minute. And then force of air resistance, force with a little air underneath it. This is called air friction. It's a special kind of friction, and it also opposes motion. One more concept we should talk about before we move along is inertia. Now, I touched on it really quickly, but inertia is laziness. It is the tendency of an object to resist its change in motion. So if an object is at rest and not moving, it resists leaving rest. And if an object is in motion, it resists changing that motion. And if you take a look at this like GIF of the giraffe, the car and the giraffe are in motion until the car hits the wall. And then the giraffe has inertia and wants to keep moving, which is why you see its head bob like this. Guys, this is why we wear seat belts. If the car around you stops very suddenly, I want you to stop with the car. If you continue to move forward, you will stop by hitting the dashboard. This is a great kind of way to think about it. The things that have more mass have more inertia. It's harder to get them started moving and it's harder to stop them from moving. For example, it's harder to stop an elephant, a lot of mass, than a mouse. And this other gif with the eggs shows this. The eggs have inertia. They do not want to move even though the tray moves out from underneath them. Once the tray moves out, there's no support force and the eggs fall in the glass. So let's focus on this idea of friction. Now it comes in two flavors. The first one we call static friction, or force of friction static. And this is the friction that opposes motion as the body is not moving or at rest. Velocity is zero meters per second. Force of friction static is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as force applied as you push until the body begins to move. So in this simulation, 
I have this orange figure here trying to push this crate. And currently, we can see that all of the forces, the sum of the forces, or the net force, is zero. There's a force due to gravity. There's a normal force holding it up. But if the orange figure starts to apply a force, in this case, 50 newtons, you see that the frictional force pushing back on it to prevent it from moving is also 50 newtons. And so our sum is still zero. If the orange figure continues to push with more and more force, the frictional force increases as well, up until a point. Once we get to a point, all of a sudden, the orange figure is applying more forces than the frictional force. And you have a net force in one direction, and the box begins to move. As long as that fr orange figure applies that force, the box begin continues to move. But what happens when he stops? The frictional forces are still there, and now the sum of the forces, or the net force, is in the opposite direction, and the box comes to a slowdown or a stop. What happens if we increase the friction to lots? The amount of force the man, uh, the orange figure is required to apply gets bigger and bigger and bigger, not only to overcome inertia, but also to overcome frictional forces. And so a lot more force is required in order to get that box to start moving. Once it is moving, the frictional forces are much, much bigger, and the box comes to a rest much sooner. We interrupt this normally scheduled lecture to bring you a story about how the Egyptians built the pyramids. Now, uh, I hope that you recognize that the pyramids are these marvels of engineering feat that the Egyptians were able to build with pretty simple tools. But they understood physics as well. So if you imagine the pyramids are made out of these giant blocks that have tons and tons of mass. They also have tons and tons of inertia. And so, if one worker on the pyramids were to apply a force in this direction, and you'll notice it's red because it's in the x direction, the force of friction will push back upon it. And the block doesn't move. But then that worker gets a buddy, and two people push on this side of the block and the force of friction is still bigger than or still equal to that force and the block doesn't move it's still at rest but if you get a third and a fourth worker uh, to apply a force in this direction now they can overcome the force of static friction and they can get the block to start to move the Egyptians were masters at this, and they did things like put these logs down so that they could drag these incredibly big blocks along. They did that to lower the amount of friction required to move the block, and so therefore they could use fewer workers in order to move the blocks incredible distances. The second kind of friction is called kinetic friction, and this is the friction of movement. It's known as F, FK, and it's the friction that opposes motion while the body has started moving. It has a velocity. This friction, force of friction kinetic, is always going to be lower than the force of friction static. So once the workers on the, the Egyptian workers started, started getting the block moving, it accelerates or changes its velocity. But then sometime later, they don't need as many workers to keep that block going once it's started. You may have experienced this if you have ever had to push a car. It takes a lot of effort in order to get that car started, but once you have the car rolling, it keeps moving easier and easier. Well, there's some math involved in this, and it's called coefficients of friction. And you have this funny looking U with a tail in the front, and it is called mu. And 
we add a subscript to tell people whether this is mew, static, not moving, or mew, kinetic, the moving friction. This letter here is a Greek letter called mew. I make it sound like a cat, so you're going to remember it. And a coefficient of friction is a ratio that represents either the slickness of a surface or the stickiness of a surface and the body on top of it trying to move. <clears throat> the math form formula you need is force friction equals mu force normal. Okay, now before you freak out that, oh my gosh, that looks like an awful equation, physics is fun. Guys, do you see how I can say that physics is fun and that helps you remember the coefficient of friction equation? What's cool is as soon as you learn the coefficient of friction equation, you get two for the price of one. The coefficient of friction equation for static friction is force friction static equals mu static force normal, and that's the up force. Kinetic friction is force friction kinetic equals mu kinetic times force normal. There are three characteristics of coefficients of friction. They will never be negative. They will always be less than one. In other words, they will be a decimal. And you don't need to apply a unit to coefficients of friction or use.